Chuck, we're back. Yes, we are. <laughs> and here's what's interesting. There are certain things that we just experience in our lives and never even think to question it. True. Because it's in our yes. everyday life. And, 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 and some things you don't want to know the answer. You don't want to know the answer. That's different. Some things <laughs> so it's just best like, left unexplained, unknown. You know what? I'm not, I'm not going to mess with this. I'm not this. going to go there. No, no. Right. This one, you ask a simple question, why does ice float? Right. Have you ever asked that? I have. You um, have? Okay. I have, yeah. I mean, because when you think about it, it's water, but you're putting it in water. It's yeah, liquid. It's, it's water it's liquid. and water, right. It's water and water. So, And usually when you cool something down, it shrinks. Okay? It becomes more dense. Tell me about it. <laughs> mm. So it becomes more dense. And so you would think that a cooler version of some liquid would be, you know, if you shrink the same mass down to a smaller volume, it's more dense that right. all ice cubes would sink to the bottom of your glass. As a matter of fact, in certain parts of the oceans, I'm going to, where you have what they call, um, oh God, now I forget the name of it. It just, it was just on the tip of my tongue. But the coldest water stays at the bottom of the ocean. Yeah, we're not there yet. Oh, we're actually going to talk about that? <laughs> yes. Okay. Oh, we are? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, sweet. <laughs> oh, my gosh. We're totally right. going there. Okay. Forget about that. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. So, so a peculiar thing happens to water when it changes state. Okay. okay. A change of state means you go from liquid to solid, solid to gas. Yeah. So, we have water, and there it is. When it freezes, the water molecule, in order to freeze, takes up more volume than does the water molecule in a liquid state. So the water expands by about 10%. Nice. Okay. And roughly you can think about that as if you are, if you expand 10% and you go back into your liquid, you will bob with about 10% of your volume above the water. Okay. And 90% below. So just put, put an ice cube in your glass. It's easier to see this if it's in a cube shape rather than in those crescent shapes or other things. But if you take a cube and put it in there, 10% will be above the water and 90% will be below. All right, hold on. Oh, okay. All right. Okay, okay. All right. I just happen to have a glass of water here. Oh, you so. do? And are your, is your ice in it? Are they cubes? Oh my goodness. Look at that. That's Awesome. Yes, this is a cube. Okay. Okay. And Excellent. you're and you just see it's got like a little surface. You can't see it, but it's got a little surface because the top part is clear. I don't know why. But it's just like you said. It's, it's bo like it's bobbing up. Yeah, it's, it's bobbing. It, it, but most of it is below. Yeah, so, so Chuck, got a little bit above. It's not happening because I said so. It's happening because this is how the universe works. No, <laughs> okay. it's no, you're a wizard. <laughs> Stop lying. You. <laughs> now, here's an interesting fact. If you take that same glass of water with that one ice cube in it and fill it as much as you possibly can so that not another drop can go in it without spilling over the edge. Right. If you do that, okay, the ice will be sitting above that level above the lip of the glass. Right. And you might be worried, oh my gosh, I better get a coaster because when this melts, it's going to overflow. But no, when it melts, it's going to take up the volume that it's already displacing in the water itself and it's not going to get any higher than it currently is. Right. This wow. is why the Arctic ice sheets in the Arctic, so where Santa Claus is, Right. It is ice that is floating on the water. In the future, where global warming melts the entire northern cap, when that happens, it will not, that alone will not increase the sea levels of the world. Because the ice is already floating in the in bathtub water. of that water. That's correct. So right. the ice you need to worry about is the ice that's on land. Oh, that runoff. The runoff, okay? That ice, you melt That's that, you're directly adding water. Con That's on Greenland and in primarily Greenland and Antarctica. So that yeah. then starts flooding the oceans and raising 
raising the sea levels. Okay, so now- by, by the way, uh, 232 feet, if that were to happen. Oh, thank you for that number. Yeah, I think I, I tweeted once that if you, if you do that, then the water level will go up to the left elbow of the Statue of Liberty. Yeah. Uh, the one that's holding, um, I think it's the Declaration of Independence, uh, just in her arm. And yeah, and that basically you lose Manhattan and basically every other coastal city of which where, where you find most of the great cities of the world are on the water's edge. So anyhow, so, so, so that's why ice floats. But there's more going on here. You could delay the freezing of the ice. It freezes at 32 degrees or zero degrees Celsius. You can make it freeze at like one degree below zero <clears throat> if you put it under pressure. Okay. okay yeah. And right. it's good. So it gets colder and it says, I want to freeze. I have to get bigger. I have to get bigger. I'm not letting you. So then it doesn't, it doesn't change the state. Okay. But if you keep taking the temperature lower and lower under pressure, the ice says, the ice says, Fuck it. okay. And I will expand no matter what you're doing. And boom, pipes break. Yeah. Okay, so I don't know why I'm ha I don't know why I'm so happy about that. <laughs> I'm a homeowner. No. What am I talking about? <laughs> no. That's disastrous. You're happy that you you now understand the full dynamics of that. So it would be very hard for ice at 32 degrees to break a pipe because the pipes are made of typically they're made of copper or some strong metal. And so it'll keep it squeezed down and it say, no, you're not freezing at 30. No, I'm not going to let you freeze at 30 degrees. No, not at 29. Oh, 25 degrees, pow. pow. And, it, and, it, and it is stronger than the pipes and you just yeah. break the pipes. And by the way, at that moment, all the pipes are frozen. There's no leakage. When do you have leakage? When the temperature when goes up again and then the ice melts out of the path and then the water flies. Oof. So the, 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 the act of broken pipes, in most cases, is not the moment where you get the leak. Because the ice is there. The ice is there right. plugging the pipes. It's later on when the ice moves out of the way. So, right. so th this is the power of freezing ice. Now, last point I want to make is, well, how about the density of water just as water? Does it change density? Yes, it does. Okay? As you cool water... It takes up slightly less and less volume. Hardly noticeable if you're just swimming in it or you're just looking. Just look. And by the, if you heat water, it takes up slightly more volume. And a lot of the increased sea level rise in the future of global warming is simply because the oceans are warmer. And they're warmer, they, they take up, uh, you know, let's say it's 1% more depth. Right. But you come, but what is 1% more depth in the middle of the ocean where it's three miles deep? Okay. If it's 1% more depth, by the time you get to the shoreline, you have flooding. Right. Okay. So let's cool the water. It gets colder and colder and colder. It, it begins to shrink. Well, at some point that has to turn around because eventually it's going to become ice where it's bigger. There is a point where ice is at its densest and it's three degrees Celsius. Really? Okay. So. You, so you cool water at the surface, it's denser than the water below it, and so that cool water drops, and it goes to the bottom, okay? And it stays there. You keep trying to cool water at the top, and it goes down to the bottom. But what happens now? You're cooling water. Now the water is 2 degrees Celsius or 1 degree Celsius. It begins to stay on top. Then it hits 0 degrees Celsius. It freezes on top. On top keeping the three degree water at the bottom right preserving all aquatic life over the winter time that's why you don't have bird's eye frozen fish once the uh, <laughs> once the <laughs> lake freezes just think the about lake... it. if ice sank oh my gosh you would freeze lakes from the bottom up you'd freeze oh, the top layer would go to the bottom and slowly but surely all the fish would be swimming in an ever thinner layer of water until you just go in and scoop them all up, and that's the last fish that would ever exist in that lake. Mm. Oh, what a what a bear's dream! So, <laughs> no, they're hibernating. <laughs> they're missing this. <laughs> that's so, true. Yeah. So, so this feature of water protects life over the winter, aquatic life over the winter. Wow. 
And once you form the ice layer on the top, it actually insulates the bottom. You get really cold on top, but that does that, how long will that take to transmit through a thick layer of ice? It takes a long time. By then, it's daytime compared to night, or spring has come, and so you rarely, if ever, do you end up freezing an entire lake. And it's because yeah. of this property of water that ice floats, that ice is less dense than water. That is amazing. And it's, it's pretty cool that this, this becomes like its own little closed ecosystem where the ice freezes on top, insulates the water beneath it so that all the life is protected. It's protected. That's, that's it, amazing. It's, it's basically, it, so this is a feature of this fact about water, the water molecule. One other thing, it's what enables you to ice skate, okay? Because the reverse is true. So I, if I have an ice cube, and it's sitting at, let's say, 30 degrees, okay? Right. And it's frozen, so minus one, let's say, Celsius. If I squeeze it, if I squeeze it under pressure, I'm trying to put it into a smaller volume. Mm -hmm. Ice won't let you do that. Right. But if I press it really hard, what's the only way the ice can respond to you to go into a smaller volume? It's got to become water. It's got to become water. So you can squeeze melt something even at sub-freezing Oh my God! That's, that's how you get the great ice cube, no, no, ice spheres for drinking scotch. What you just said, they take a copper press and I'm too excited about this, I'm sorry. <laughs> this, is this bar information that you're sharing? I know, us? I know. Now we're, ta now we're talking about scotch and drinking. I'm like, oh my God. Uh, and you don't even have your scotch voice today. Right? I know, what exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. You want another scotch? Definitely need a little scotch, is what I'm saying. <laughs> but, so. wait, 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 but, let, yeah. let, me just, let me just finish this point. So, Go ahead. Um, when you're skating on ice, okay, the blade, is the way it's, it's sharpened is it has a very sharp edge on one side and on the other, on right. the left and on the right-hand side. So you go on an edge, and you, skaters know about this, or on the inside edge or on the outside edge. That is, is a lot of pressure. We've got to do a whole other explainer video on force and pressure. But that pressure is so high that it actually melts the ice in place, and the skate glides on a bead of water. Wow, that's great. That's, that's, that's why That's why ice is slippery on ice skates. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, that same premise you just um, 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 demonstrated, when you get a, they make spheres of ice for drinking I scotch. I love spe ice spheres, yeah. Ice spheres. And they use, for some reason, copper. I don't know why, but they use the copper or brass, one or the other. And they just put the ice in the sphere and they let the brass, it's a big weight. It's a brass weight or a copper weight. And it just presses down on the ice and then the ice melts into a ball that is so cool oh okay oh, so they take they, oh, okay so the shaping the sphere from the pressure on a shape that's not a sphere that's right oh, okay yeah so, so under pressure yes it'll melt under pressure it melts yet yet, yet when you relieve the pressure it freezes instantly it freezes right because back it's, and it, because you... it's the it's the below freezing temperature that you started with exactly and then you just have a big a literal ball of ice okay chuck i don't go to many bars i've never seen this i, I trust that in your bar hopping this is something that... <laughs> feature okay i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to get you out man <laughs> i gotta get out more often okay. i'm gonna have to get you out of the house <laughs> all right so that's that's it chuck that's uh, ice is less dense than water nice i'm always fascinated how we end up in these great places from something so seemingly um mundane as a cube of ice or ice melting and next Super time we do cool. this, we got to do this with one of your spheres of ice. And I want to do a whole explainer video with you and your scotch voice. Okay. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Not a problem. <laughs> Not a I'll start on it right now. Right now. <laughs> we got this. All right. <laughs> All right, Chuck. Always good to have you. Always a pleasure. Neil deGrasse Tyson here for Star Talk. Keep looking up. <laughs>